Good morning, everybody, or afternoon, however the case may be. Uh, today, I'm going to look at how we would do a projectile problem where the cannonball is fired, key phrase here, horizontally. Um, so it's just kind of a special situation, a special case of what we've done. And so just kind of want to show you some things to help you work through that. Um, as always, start with your a picture. So we have a cliff. It's on a 100 meter tall cliff. So we have our cliff, we have our cannon, and the cannon is firing straight sideways. Okay, here's the ground far below. Um, we know that the cliff or the cannon ball, we're gonna assume this 100 meters includes the height of the cannon. So this is 100 meters. Um, and we know that the cannon ball, when it's fired, is fired straight to the side, horizontally means straight to the side, with a speed of 50 meters per second. Okay? So there's our cannon ball, 50 meters per second. Now, remember, we're going to be doing things by figuring out what are X numbers and what are Y numbers. And in order for us to do that correctly, we need to identify those first. So first off, um, this 100 meters is a distance, but is it up and down distance? So is that an X or is that a Y? Well, up and down is Y. I'm going to put DX here. I'm sorry, DY. Our distance in the Y direction is 100 meters, but it's also I'm going to make a key change, and this is really important. D direction has a big impact on these questions. This 100 meters is how tall the cliff is. But are we looking at the cliff? No, we're looking at the cannonball. So the cannonball is actually going to fall down 100 meters. So we got to be careful here. This is going to be for the cannonball. And so the distance for the cannonball has to be a negative. Okay, and that's really important for you to see and notice, a negative distance, because the cannonball is actually going to fall down the 100 meters. Now, we know that it's not going to fall straight down, it's not going to fall at a, at a specific angle, but it's going to be more of an arc, okay, and it's going to land right here. Now, what is the question asking us to find? How far away will it land? Well, that is also a distance, but that is a side-to-side -side distance, so that's going to be a dx. I'm going to put dx as a question mark here, saying, hey, you know, how far away in the side-to-side -side direction are we falling? All right, <clears throat> now, first step is always to figure out v1s for the x and for the y using SOHCAHTOA. And this is a special situation. I want you to imagine something here. This is going to be possibly a little difficult to imagine, but right here, imagine a triangle, uh, an imaginary triangle, and that's going to be key. We know the side to side is 50 meters per second long. How far up and down is the up and down side? Zero. So just imagine with me here. Imagine we could do this. We know this isn't true, but imagine this was our thing. Where the side to side, the Vx is 50 and the Vy is zero. Well, what angle would we have here? Well, straight side to side always means an angle of zero degrees. And I want to show you why this works according to trigonometry. Uh, so to find the Vy, this is the opposite. So this is going to be the sine of everything. So if you take the sine of zero degrees equals Vy over our hypotenuse, our hypotenuse here is really the same. It's you know saying, hey, 50 meters per second. That's how the hypotenuse has always been what is the actual speed of the projectile. So that's why that's going to be 50. So on my calculator, again, making sure it's in degree mode, not radian, and take sine of zero, and sine of zero actually gives me zero. So if I then multiply both sides by the 50 to get solving for this, any 50 times zero is going to be zero, which means my Vy is zero. And that's what we can just kind of assume from reason. If we know the thing, the cannonball is shot straight sideways, we know none of that speed is up and down. So it has a starting V1 of zero. Well, trigonometry just 
proved that for us or reinforced that. Now let's do the same thing for the VX. This is the adjacent side, so that would be cosine, but of zero degrees, equals VX over 50, right? And so we're looking at this and saying, okay, um, cosine of zero, so I type in cosine of zero on my calculator, and it gives me the number one. Well, if I multiply both sides by 50, 1 times 50 is going to be 50, so our Vx equals 50. And again, this is just trying to reinforce why the numbers are what they are. If the cannonball is shot straight to the side with a speed of 50, we can use common sense to say, yeah, its x velocity is 50 and its y velocity is 0 right at the beginning. So that's just using some Sokotoa to prove that. Okay, now, what else do we know? We know the acceleration all the time. Ax in the x direction is always going to be 0. Ax in the y direction is always a negative 9.8. We have acceleration in the y because of gravity. Our acceleration in the x is 0 because gravity only affects up and down. And we pretend there's no air resistance. So there's nothing to slow it down in the x direction. Okay? Now... Key piece of information that's missing, and which is almost always missing in these questions, is time. If we had time, we could solve this. So we look at this and we say, okay, uh, which side has enough information to find time? Well, right now we really only know two numbers on the x side, and one of those is a zero, which is going to make things a little bit harder for us. So let's look at the y side. We have a dy. We have a v1. And we have an acceleration. Go back to your equation sheet. Look at your equations and say, okay, well, which thing has time? There's a lot of equations that have time in it. Um, which of those equations do we have enough numbers for so we have everything else except for the t? And right now you're going to look at those, and there's really only one equation that does that for you. It's this equation right here. D equals V1 times t plus one-half at squared. But we want to put these in as y's because we're going to be using y numbers. So I do that. dy, I know I actually have that number, is a negative 100. I'm not going to do units just to make it a little easier to see. vy1 is 0 times t plus one-half times negative 9.8 multiplied by my time squared. Okay? Well, this is nice here because 0 times t is going to just be 0, so we can ignore that. And then 1 half times negative 9.8 is negative 4.9 multiplied by t squared equals a negative 100. And so i got to divide both sides to get the 4.9 away from the t squared. And if you have two negatives and one's divided by the other, the negatives go away, which is a good thing for us. So we're going to get t squared, 100 divided by 4.9. Sorry, negative 100 divided by negative 4.9. 20.41 equals t squared. Now, we got to be careful. That's not a time. That's the time squared. So to get rid of a power of 2, we have to square root both sides. And when you do that, you take the square root of your answer. And you're going to get four point, I'm going to round here to two decimal places, 4.52 seconds. Now, that's not our answer. That is our time. Remember, that is what's going to allow us to put numbers in here. So now we have a number for time on both sides. Why on both sides? Because time doesn't have a direction. All of these other numbers have a specific direction that they're talking about. Some of them are talking about up and down numbers, so that's why we put them on the y side. Some of them are side to side numbers, which is why we put them on the x side. Time does not have a direction, so it can be on both. Now, we have enough information so that we can find a d. Okay, so looking at our equations again, we're gonna come back to this equation. Again, we have a v1. Now we have a T. <clears throat> we had the A all along. 
and we have found a t again. So we're going to use that same equation, but now we're going to use x numbers. Really important, you can only use numbers that are related to the same direction. So dx equals my v1, which is 50, multiplied by my t. Again, I'm not going to use units to make it a little bit easier to look at plus one half times, be careful here, the x acceleration is zero. So it's gonna be zero times times squared. The zero makes this part nice, it all cancels out. So we're really just taking 50, multiplying it by 4.52, <clears throat> and we're gonna get 225 point, and when I round, 88. Now take, use some common sense here, what units will this have? Well, it's a distance. All of our distances have been in meters on this question. So our distance here is also gonna be in meters. So that's an example of how to find horizontal things. Uh, if you have any questions, please, please, please let me know. Send those my way and I'll get back to you.